Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. I'm so glad you all can join us today. Welcome to Bear Foundations. Before I get started, I want you all to scan this QR code if you need the live captionings. Uh, I know sound here can be a little difficult, but if you want live captioning, scan this QR code. It will be on for that about three more slides. So I'll give you time to scan it. But welcome to Bear Foundations. My name is Charlie, and I'll be one of your hosts today. Next slide, please. So, for this Bear Foundations program, I am going to introduce myself and give a little land acknowledgement for before we even begin. We take a moment to recognize that Berkeley sits on territory of ancestral and unceded land. Berkeley, in our office, New Student Services, affirms indigenous sovereignty and will work to keep the university accountable to the needs of native indigenous people. Uh, we have a slide on there to guide you all for any resources if you feel like you need to inform yourself a little bit more on the lands that you sit, work, and sleep on. There's numbers and a website there that y'all can be using. But without that, we'll continue on to the next slide. And I'm going to briefly introduce myself to y'all. So my name is Charlie, like I said, I'm a rising fourth year pre-med student, by double majoring in MMBB and society environment. I'm also a student coordinator here at New Student Services slash the department that organizes GBO. I am on the OL team, so I coordinate, facilitate, and train the orientation leaders. So shout out to the orientation leaders here. Yes, and this is another of my projects, which is Bear Foundations. So in the next slide, you may ask yourself, what is Bear Foundations? This is a program where y'all are given a space to engage in conversations about your identities, both within and outside the classroom space. And overall, talking about your expectations as Cal students, and just really talking about the Cal journey in general. Today, we have a great presentation for all of y'all, and we're going to be providing y'all some frameworks, some tools to use as new students to help guide you through these next four years. I'm very, very proud of this program. We did a lot of rehamping from last year. We redesigned it, so hopefully y'all are going to be excited of this new redesign and find the tool that we provide to you to be helpful, especially for those who may be arriving to Cal without you know, an idea of what to do, an idea of what you're thinking your career path will be going. So yes, this tool is all for you and for everyone. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoy it. We also have a special guest who will be explaining that tool and giving you more of the theory and more of the explanation. And I'll be providing an example of it. But during this short time here, it's going to be engaging. It's going to be active. Uh, we have a lot of activities for y'all to participate in. So I hope y'all are going to be engaged and feel ready to start talking to the people around you and just overall be participating because change is growth. With that being said, let's start on with the new, with the first activity. So I'm gonna get situated with the um, activity and for the first activity, it's called Stand or Signify. Uh, does anyone know here about the activity stand or signify? Can I get a yes or no? No? <laughs> okay, no worries, no worries. So stand and signify is very, very easy. Do not fret, do not fret. All you have to do is stand or signify if the statement that I read resonates with you in any type of way. So for instance, with the first activity, I'm going to be asking yourselves, all of you, Stand or signify if you're from California. Oh. 
All righty. We got some Californians in. I see you, I see you all. All right, next. Stand or signify if you are from somewhere other than California. So we got international students, out of state students, we see you. Stand or signify if you are the first person in your family to go to college. <laughs> me too, me too. Shout out to the first gens. Wonderful. Stand or signify if you're a student parent. Shout out to the parents and the audience. Stand or signify if you identify as a person of color. Amazing, thank you. Stand or signify if you have faced many obstacles before coming to university and you overcame them. All of you, y'all better be standing signifying. Stand or signify if you have experienced anxiety or depression at some point in your life. Yes, yes, yes. Stand or signify if you or someone very close to you has a disability or thinks about accessibility. So, as you can see, some of these statements are fun and lighthearted, and some might be a little more deeper and more sensitive. But that's all what about this program is about. Let's continue on. Stand or signify if you've ever felt scared to stand up for what you believe in. Stand or signify if you've ever been hungry because you couldn't afford a meal. Stand or signify if you ever felt like those around you do not understand you. Our stand or signify if someone you or you have been ever racially profiled. Thank you, thank you. Stand or signify if deep in your heart there are gifts you want to share with the world and believe this university can provide those tools to achieve that. Last but not least, stand or signify if you're proud to be a golden bear. Beautiful. The excitement is in the audience. All right, with that being said, that was the activity for stand and signify. Thank you all for participating. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did. Next, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce my special guest. He's a consultant for Fortune 500 companies and the founder of Underground, Holistic Underground, a global organization that supports the success and the integrity of social and environmental movements. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Mazen Jamal. Please, don't stop, keep going, please. <laughs> Make some noise for Charlie, y'all. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, don't, don't. I'm feeling good. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, give me a clap like that. Boom, 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 boom. It's a Thursday, and it's a good day. The sun is shining. I'm feeling grateful. I'm with the Golden Bears. And they some good old bears. I'm with the Golden Bears. And they some good old bears. Now if you hear me say yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. Make some noise. 
make some noise for yourselves, y'all. Ooh. That was nice. That was really nice. I'm very grateful to be here with you all. Again, my name is Mazen Jamal, and I want you to know that today I am committed to giving you something that you can use. Something that you can use here in your journey at Cal to find a sense of purpose and build a sense of belonging, all right? You have just begun a new chapter of your lives. And believe me, I know, not because I got into Cal, because I didn't, but I tried. <laughs> I know you worked very hard to get here. Make some noise if you worked very hard to get into one of the most prestigious universities in the world. Okay, okay, okay. So we want to make sure that you do not just excel academically, but that you get to have an experience here in this chapter of your lives that is transformational that sets you up for the rest of your journey. So you're gonna get some tools today that you can use. I'm gonna teach them to you right now, and then you go into small groups and you're gonna actually work with your OLs to build this tool for yourself. And I promise you, if you really lean in with me, all right? I'm talking to y'all in the back. If you really engage with what I have to share with you, this could be very, very powerful for you. So this is not a lecture, all right? You don't need to just like tune out, I don't want to see you on your phones. Be here with me. Can we do that? All right, good. Thank you. So, thank you. Yes, let's make some noise for the technology, y'all. All right, all right. <laughs> I, like, I like them. They're good. So, when I say find a sense of purpose, I'm talking about a sense of meaning in your life, a sense of direction, being able to share your gifts with others so that at the end of the day, you feel fulfilled, you feel like I came here and I did what I came to do. And when I talk about belonging, this means the relationships you have with others. This also means the relationships you have with the places, the institutions, like the University of California, Berkeley, but also with this community, this neighborhood, this land that you are on. So we are talking about belonging ourselves in a very deep way to the place that we are in. And this is one of the most diverse universities in America. And this gives a very unique opportunity for a deeper level of belonging. Dr. John Powell of the Othering and Belonging Institute that's right here at Cal teaches us about bridging, about how through the relationships, friendships and connections, the collaborations we do, we can actually heal some of the divides that have plagued this country from the very beginning the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, the things that have affected you probably in your life at some point, or at least people you love, but continue to affect millions of people. So the work of belonging is also, in a way, healing these generational wounds. We're gonna be connecting with people here at Cal that may be very different from you. And so these tools are gonna to help us do that in a very intentional way. And if you don't wanna take my word for it, we can take you back to psych class. I'm guessing y'all are here. You probably took AP Psych or something. If not, you heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah, Maslow. <laughs> now, as you can see, once our basic needs as human beings have been taken care of, the first thing we start to look for is love and belonging, right? Can you imagine your life without it, right? Whether it's your family or a group of friends or a community or a club you're in, right? There are people that we need to have relationships with to feel okay. Loneliness and isolation is a big problem in our world today. We're, you know, all connected on the internet and you can share a reel and you can get some likes, but do we know how to love? Can you show people how you really feel? It's not always easy. And so belonging is very important. And once we get that belonging, we start to look for esteem and self-actualization. So this is how we evolved as human beings to reach our highest version, to be the best version of ourselves, and these tools will help with that. So I've spent the last 10 years developing a framework, these tools to help you do that. And me and my team actually work with people all over the world, helping them in their organizations, in their companies, in their activist groups, 
to do just that, to turn their workplace into a purpose place, to find their purpose place in their lives. But my story actually began a very long time ago when I was 15 years old. My family had moved us over to Dubai when I was 10 to be closer to Sudan, which is where my family's from. And I was having a pretty good time. I started my first business at 15. I was throwing parties because I like parties. And um, that's how I would make my money. Me and my mom, you're gonna think I'm really cool, we're best friends. I remember me and my mom were sitting next to each other, cuddling on the couch at 15, yes, I am not ashamed. And we were crying and holding each other because we had just found out that Michael Jackson died. And it was a devastating moment. We loved him so much, we would like dance to his music in the kitchen all the time. And six months later, my sister and I spent the last six months of my mother's life with her in the hospital. Every day after school, we would go there to the hospital, we'd spend our time there with her in the week, on the weekends. And something really amazing actually happened in that hospital room. First of all, every time we would go there, we would meet people who had flown in from all over the world, people I'd never met, never heard of, who came to see my mom. And they were like, your mom changed my life. She, she you know, understood me when no one else did. For years to come, I would actually meet people and they'd find out I was her son and they'd grab me by the shoulders and be like, your mom changed my life, she was amazing, she was a, an angel, and I was like, who, who was my mom? Like, how did she impact all of these people in this way? And something else amazing is that all that six months, she couldn't speak because she was on a ventilator, but she was always smiling and always looking at everyone with these eyes that were like, hey, you matter. You belong here with me, and you can do this. And that's, that's she kind of charged me up for the rest of my life in that last six months. And it put me on this obsessive path of like, how did she live her life? What did she do that allowed her to impact so many people and to have so much peace at the very end going through something so difficult? And it totally changed me. And the thing that I, the first lesson that I noticed from her was that she was always being of service to others. And I was like, okay, that's the first clue, the first key, be of service to others. So after that, I actually moved back here to the Bay Area, me and my sister, we lived with my aunt and my cousins. And it was a very big culture shock, y'all, because the Bay Area is very different than the Middle East, let me just say that. There were a lot of things that I grew up with ways of thinking, let's just say I was not at all woke, all right? There was some homophobic and sexist and backwards ways of thinking that I had grown up in and were still in my mind. And my cousins were like, bro, what are you doing? How, you can't be like this out here. And so that actually brought the second lesson of my journey was if I actually wanna be of service and make a difference the way that my mother did, I actually have to heal and grow myself and become the better version of myself so that I'm not causing harm unintentionally. You can make some noise for that. You know, we all on our journeys. I ain't perfect, but I'm working on it. <laughs> we all are, right? So by the time I got to college, and I was exactly where you were, just at a different university, I was, I was doing the most, or I was lit. I was like, I'm gonna be a part of every club. I'm gonna volunteer for everything. I'm gonna be a part of every student group, the black student group, the Mexican student group, the Palestinian student group, the G a Jewish student group. I was with the queer student group. I was helping everyone with their events because I love throwing parties. I was in a band and I was throwing, I was doing the most, okay? Because I was like, I'm gonna be of service and I'm gonna live life to the fullest. And then I got really sick. I burnt out. Anyone ever burn out before? It's not pretty. It's not pretty, okay? I burnt out and it was actually pretty bad and it made me think, I'm like, whoa, this is reminding me of when I was in the hospital with my mom. Like, why am I doing this to myself? And what I realized was that all my friends, all of my activist friends and my community building friends and these artists that I would hang out with, musicians, they were burnt out too. And we cared about the world and we cared about things, but we were doing the most, abusing substances, just having all this internalized trauma, we didn't know what to do with it, taking it out on each other, our anger and angst with the world, you know, uh, accidentally causing harm while trying to save the world. And I was like, this is not gonna work. This is not gonna sustain. 
But luckily, around that time, I discovered holistic health. I learned to med meditate, I learned about Tai Chi. I was like, this, why, why aren't we all doing this? So that's when the second chapter of my journey began and I decided to dedicate my life to helping the activists and the artists and the creatives and the change makers to be able to do what they were doing but sustain it over time. So me and my friends started a nonprofit called Holistic Underground and we made that our mission to bring together healing, arts, and activism so that we could help those who are trying to make the world a better place do so sustainably. So since then, between Holistic Underground, the nonprofit, and Purpose Place, this company that does consulting and coaching, me and my team have been able to help tens of thousands of people all over the world. The tools you're gonna get, we've used with activists in Borneo, Malaysia, with uh, business people in Ghana, West Africa, with people in Mexico and Chile, all over the Bay Area, some of the biggest companies sit in Silicon Valley. I'm just trying to say it works, all right? This is some legit stuff you're about to get, so get excited. And these are gonna be the tools we share with you today. So, let's go! Y'all ready? Y'all ready to get some tools today? Okay, okay, okay. It's my bears out here. So, let's go ahead and begin to give you these tools. And the first one we're gonna start with is building belonging, all right? So, I want you to think of your life like this big, vast ocean of possibility. All right, you can go in many different directions. And belonging serves a purpose in your life of giving you a boat, keeping you dry, helping you stay afloat. Those relationships, those places you go, those safe spaces, those communities that you might be a part of, those clubs and those groups, that is your boat that helps you navigate this ocean of life, all right? So the thing is, a lot of us, when we're looking for belonging in life, we're looking for community. People are like, Mazin, how do I find community? Where do I go? What do I do? The default way we think about it is, where can I get what I want, right? Where can I, where are the people, where's the community that they look the way I look, you know, they're interested in the things I'm interested in, they're, you know, they have the kind, they, they, they're the right age, they're the right color, whatever it might be. And so this way of trying to build belonging, I don't think what I call the default approach is very effective because the question and the result are not aligned. You see, the question of where can I get what I want, or another one is, you know, bear with me here, boom. Who matches what I want? Y'all are great, y'all are just, y'all just with me right now. Who matches what I want, right? Are, are, are they the, the right group, are they cool? You know, are they gonna help me get the money that I want? Whatever it might be, it results in People being focused on ourselves rather than connecting with others, right? Where can I get what I want? Where can I find the people who match me? Me, me, me. And also, we go into a mindset of judging ourselves and others, right? Am I black enough to be with this black group? Am I smart enough to be with this smart group? Am I woke enough to be with this woke group? Am I spiritual enough to be with the spiritual group? And it's always just comparison and judgment. Have you experienced this before in your life? kind of feeling left out, feeling like maybe I'm not enough, maybe I don't fit the bill or I don't reach the mark. This is not a way to build belonging. So instead, a better approach is to really be asking the question of, where can I share what I have? And better, where can I find a fit? If you think about the people who inspire you, your idols, the people that really, you know, change your life, even just through their works, their music, their art, their ideas. They're not going around the world like, where can I get what I want, all me, me, me. But they're out there sharing with others, being of service. And this is actually the first step to building the kind of relationships that last. Why? Well, because when you're asking, where can I share what I have, you're more likely to be appreciated because the foundation of that relationship is you sharing your gifts with others. You're going and finding the place of like, where am I needed? Where is who I am going to be appreciated and accepted? I don't have to be someone else. I don't have to change myself. Just the things that I have to offer are actually what are needed in this group. And the thing is, you're not always gonna be with people who are exactly like you. Sometimes the people who can appreciate you the most are people who are very different from you. 
And so when we're asking where can I find a fit, it's more likely we can celebrate differences and be focused on connection. Like if I'm a drummer, yeah, maybe I want to hang out with 10 other drummers and have a drum circle, but it's really cool if I find a bass player, a guitar player, maybe a violin player, a singer, and now we started a band. So when we are in this mindset of sharing our gifts, it's more likely we can build that. I want to give you an example based on a story from my life. You know, I told you I, I like to party. I don't abuse substances anymore, thank goodness, but I was at a party, it was for my friend's house concert, and I was feeling very nervous because I was the only black person there. And I was like, oh man, here I am, I'm the only black person here, this is awkward. And I grew up with this story, it was in my head, I didn't realize it, but that black men are dangerous, black men are a threat. This is what I saw on the news, on the TV all the time. So I was there trying to not look suspicious. I was like, I'm normal, I'm not suspicious, I'm not here to do anything. And how do you think I looked trying to not look suspicious? I looked very suspicious. But it was just very awkward for me and I was having a very hard time. Until someone, bless their soul, was like, hey, do you wanna help us make this salad? And I was like, sure, I don't really eat salad, but I, give me something to do. So I started chop, chopping up this salad and it's like, oh, you like tomatoes? I love tomatoes. Oh, you eat organic, man? I'm all, everything organic all day. And I was like, that was my first friend. And then later when we had dinner, I heard someone like, yo, this salad is really good. And I'm like, yo, that's me. That's me, I'm the salad guy. I made that, I chopped those tomatoes, dude. That was me. Yes, they, <laughs> they're very generous. I like this. Yes, that feeling of being appreciated. And suddenly my mind was not on me being different anymore. I felt like I was in the right place because I got to share something with others and I got to not be empty handed, right? And that's when I realized, I was like, whoa, being of service actually makes me feel like I belong. So I got my salad, I shared it with everybody and we had a good old time. So when you have this mindset, there's a two way benefit. I get to feel a sense of belonging. I get to share my gifts. It gives me a sense of purpose. I get to feel like, wow, I'm being useful. I'm being contributing. And it also, of course, is supporting others. So when we're building belonging, instead of taking and judging, like where can I get what I want and who matches what I want, we're instead focused on sharing and reciprocity. I share with you, you share with me, and then we can have balance. Instead of a mindset of where can I get what I want and who matches what I want, we're instead of a, in a mindset of where can I share what I have and where can I find a fit. So that is the tool around building belonging. And as you saw in Maslow's hierarchy, that's the first step. You don't need to know exactly what am I good at, what are my greatest, you could just chop a salad. You could show up early to the party, help set up. But whenever you are feeling like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where I belong, there's actually gonna be someone else in that room who's more lonely than you. And if you walk up to that person, you're like, hey, what's your name? Now, both of you have a friend. And so this is the very different mindset. Instead of being like, am I cool? Do I look right? Am I, you're actually getting to be the person who gives belonging to others. So belonging is a verb. We are belonging ourselves. And I want you to consider, what would it be like for me to try this here at Cal? What if this was the framework that I went through? Because I know some of y'all are like getting all like, okay, I gotta look good, it's the first day of school. You know, I got my new shirt on or whatever and we get nervous. Anyone get nervous? Am I the only one out here nervous? All right, I have one brave soul who raises his hand with me. All right, some of us get nervous. Okay, you know, why not? It's okay, we're human, okay? So we are belonging ourselves. And once you've done that, we can go to the next level, which is finding a sense of purpose. So when it comes to purpose, there's a principle that I wanna teach you right now. And this is the purpose principle. Purpose is a sense of meaning, satisfaction and fulfillment that we experience when, we, uh, when our actions and the results of our actions reflect who we truly are. So when you are being your true self, right? And guess what? Most of our true selves wants to help others. Right? There's some people who are psychologically sociopathic perhaps and they're actually not, but the majority of 99% of human beings, we want to be of service. And so being of service is being your true self. 
When you contribute to others, and furthermore, develop yourself, grow yourself, and be fully present to the process, these are effective ways for you to experience a sense of purpose. And I say this for one reason, okay? You can be giving, 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 doing, 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 helping people all the time. But if you don't, aren't able to be present, you're not gonna, you can still feel empty. You can have a full calendar, a full friend group, but still feel empty inside. And so that personal growth and personal care time is also important. Because I know y'all some high achieving people out here and I say, go be of service. And y'all be like, all right, I'm gonna get a 4.5 GPA in being of service. I'm a no, we gotta still have some care for ourselves in this process. So you've got your boat of belonging because you have been sharing your gifts and trying to find places that need you and can appreciate you because you are being of service. The path of purpose actually becomes the direction on that sea and it becomes your purpose journey. There we go. So what I'm gonna share with you right now is a tool that helps you orient yourself on this journey because guess what? Unfortunately, there's no map to the ocean of life. It is vast and un un unpredictable and there's waves and there's typhoons and hurricanes. That's how life is. You probably have already experienced that. But what will be helpful for you is a compass a way to recenter and reorient yourself to who you truly are, what you want to share with the world, and that's what this tool is all about. Yeah, I like it. One person claps, everybody clap. So, I'm gonna just get this. I'm gonna keep it moving here and get right into this. So what I'm gonna have you do right now, before we go into the tool, is you're actually gonna reflect on these questions, and then I'm gonna have you turn to your neighbor and share a little bit about what are you seeing so far because guess what, this is gonna be an interactive experience. So I want you to reflect on the following, okay? What are some of the experiences that have shaped me into who I am? Because guess what? What you've been through, right? For me, the challenges that I went through, they've actually are the reason that I'm here right now sharing my gifts with you. The hardest thing that I experienced was actually something that gave me a sense of direction and purpose in my life, and the same might be true for you. And also, how can I contribute what I've gained with others? So what you wanna do is go ahead and stand up everybody if you're able to or you know, turn to someone nearby you and try to find someone you don't know if you can. And I want you to just take two minutes to reflect on these prompts that I just shared with you right now. Go ahead and take two minutes, begin. All right, make some noise for yourselves y'all. Clap it up for yourselves. Good work, you know. It takes a lot of courage to share sometimes. So, are you with me, y'all? Let me try it again. Are you with me, y'all? Okay, okay, okay. Because I know the 2023 attention span is very short, right? We all on TikTok, everything's 15 seconds long, but I promise you, this is the good part, all right? So stay with me. This is the Purpose Compass tool. This is the tool I don't know if they're paying attention. I hear people chit-chatting. Are y'all with me or what? Okay then, okay, let me get your attention, please. I only got like 50 more minutes here. One, five, 15. So, this is, this is the compass that's gonna help you reorient yourself on your path of journey of purpose and belonging. You got your four sections, north, south, east, and west. And each one of these represents an essential aspect of your life. The first one being the formative experiences. These formative experiences are an important part of your gift to the world. This might be an identity, like your ethnic or racial or cultural identity, or your gender or your nationality, but it could also be other things that you've been through. It could be things like the challenges you've been through, the kind of family you grew up in, the neighborhood or community that you come from. Whatever those experiences are that shaped you and made you who you are, those are actually gonna be part of your gifts. The second aspect of this are your core values. These are the things that when you see them in the world, it warms up your heart. You know, for me, I am very, very warmed by compassion because growing up, my mother was a very compassionate person. And so when I see people being, I'm like, 
I want to be around this person, right? But guess what? When I'm not being compassionate, life is very hard for me. I get to judging myself, and I get, it's because my core values, it's who I really am, and if I'm not being that, I'm not being my true self. So these core values, that is like the self of where you come from, right? That's your true self deep down. Over here on the east side of your purpose compass are the gifts and resources that you have. So these might be skills that you have, abilities, knowledge that you have. It might be resources that you've inherited from your family or your parents. It might be cultural resources and gifts and knowledge or techniques. It could be anything. I like to sing, so even though I'm a speaker, I like to sing when I speak sometimes. But whatever it is for you, those gifts and resources are also a part of your purpose because you don't want to have a career doing things that don't come a little bit naturally to you, right? You want to be like feeling like you are giving from who you truly are. And finally, your passions. The things that you are passionate about. These might be causes or issues in the world that you want to make a difference on. Things that keep you up at night like Maybe it's children and education of the young. Maybe it's the environment. Maybe it's justice and equity for your community. But whatever those things that you're passionate about, maybe it's art or dance or music or writing. But these four aspects, these four directions of your purpose are actually gonna be the things that help you develop direction in your life. And if you can align those four things and share those with the people around you, can you imagine the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction you could experience? It's like, I'm just being myself, sharing who I am, doing things that I'm passionate about, right, according to my values and principles. This is the key, y'all. So, we're gonna have in a moment, a student who you just heard from a moment ago, Charlie, actually share with you his purpose compass. He went through the same process that you're gonna all go and go through in your small groups with your OLs. And you're gonna actually go through these four directions, these four parts. But for you to actually do it properly, we want you to see a real life example from a student like you. Make some noise for Charlie again, y'all. Does that work? Yeah. You have to switch it on and off. All right, thank you, Mazin, for presenting the Compass Tool. I'm so glad y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to present my example. I'm not gonna go too in detail because I wanna bore you with all the my life story, but I think it's an important example so y'all can start seeing how it looks like because y'all will be creating a compass tool of your own later after this presentation. So without further ado, let's get started with my first component of my compass tool, which is formative experiences. I developed this component of my compass tool by one challenge that most university students and Cal students experience here, the feelings of isolation. During my first year, it was the COVID pandemic year. It was really difficult to connect with individuals and to really socialize and try to form my social groups and friend groups due to everything that was going on. But further years, I've noticed that I had a harder time connecting with individuals due to my unique shared lived experiences, one of them being a multicultural community where I actually grew up in two countries simultaneously. I grew up right on the border of Mexico and United States. Growing up in both countries simultaneously is a unique experience and identity that made it difficult for me to connect with individuals, but nonetheless, I we recognize that shared differences are important and this diverse campus is something that you're going to notice is that many of us have these differences. As for me though, the generational misunderstandings between my parents and I also kind of perpetuated those feelings of isolation throughout these four years due to me being a first generational student and then, then not going to university or college, it makes it harder for them to relate with me. And this is something that I feel like a lot of y'all could relate to, whether your parents did go to university or didn't, or the type of university, etc. Every, you know, college experience is different. So this one might be a component that y'all will 
definitely faced throughout your four years here at Cal. But overall, this compass, reflecting on this component of this compass tool, it helped me recognize the importance of experiences and how my experience, experiences should not be just generalized and mistaken for who I am. Even though there are different experiences between us, the feeling of isolation is what really connects most of us, even regarding those experiences being different. So one of these formative experiences helped me identify what this challenge of facing Cal was. And that led to me figuring out my values and my second challenge. So regarding my second challenge for the next slide, if I can get it to work, is core values, hardworking, independent, and free thinking. These values really helped me overcome the challenge of imposter syndrome, which is a notorious feeling that most Cal students or other university students feel. Um, I had to reflect on my core values uh, a little bit after my first midterm season. That's when the reality of Cal difficulty starts to set in and where you stand and just the reality begins to be recognized by yourselves. I had to reflect on my values a little bit more because I've lost myself for a bit on my first semester and recognizing that my values of hardworking, independent, free thinking, specifically the hardworking value really allowed me to refine myself and identify that one of my strengths as an individual was to work hard, my work ethic, and to study hard. That was the main driving force of my success in my high school and going to my undergrads. And for a little bit, I lost that about myself. So I recognized it, I realized, and began rethinking the way I was during my younger years. And it helped me overcome those feelings of imposter syndrome, which I'm going to say it is going to be the majority of us feeling it for the first semester. But y'all have this compass tool to sort of already dive out of that hole and be proactive. But with that being said, a third challenge of mine during this cow journey is that for the first and few semesters, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I think I had a general idea of what it was, but I still had doubts of in within myself. And for the third component is gifts and resources, emotional intelligence, my analytical mind, and my education. So one of those doubts of mine was trying to go to med school. I was doubting myself. I was thinking, is pre-med really the path that I want to take? And trying to reach that passion of revolutionizing the field of psychiatry, is that really me? Um, the gifts of mine helped reaffirm and give me myself that confidence that I needed simply by reflecting on that component of gifts and resources. When I realized that my gifts actually connected with my passion, it helped reform that confidence that I may have been losing. Most definitely this past summer, I was re-looking at my compass tool because I was studying for the MCAT for a good four months straight while working full time. And there was many times where I just did not want to continue, just wanted to quit and let it go. But recognizing that this compass tool, it is all connected and is all pointing me to my passion of revolutionizing the field of psychiatry, it helped me get back into it. It helped me understand that this is where I want to be and it's not just a fluke and it's not just because of chance that it is actually all pointing out and working out the way it should be. So, thank you, thank you. So with that, this is my compass tool. As you can see, everything is connected in all four components. And y'all are basically going to be doing one for yourselves with your orientation leaders. So for next steps, I'm going to be talking to you about small group discussions. So your OLs will guide you through creating your compass, 
with your orientation groups and y'all are going to be just reflecting over the presentation in itself. And just remember when you're feeling lost, check your purpose and your compass tool to reset, just like I did. You're on the right track when it's fulfilling, learning, meaning, and mastery, sustain, reciprocity, and wellness, and fun, balance of challenge and ease. But with that, we conclude the program with me and Mazin. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was a great presentation, and this is the tool that y'all will be walking with your orientation group. So with their, further than that, orientation leaders, you are all dismissed. Mazin, any final words? Thank you all so much. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you. Until next time, see you later.